What does it mean to teach a language? In this episode, I look at this question, particularly considering the shifts in language teaching and learning over the past 10 years or so. Now, my personal approach to this question is grounded in a quote from Larson, Freeman, and Long that a professor shared with me while I was in graduate school, and it has continued to guide my approach to teaching ever since. So let's jump in. Are you a language teacher looking for some reassurance that what you're doing in the classroom is on the right track? Or maybe you're looking for some ways to teach even more effectively. If you're one or the other or somewhere in between, you've landed in the right place. This is the World Language Classroom Podcast with your host, me, Joshua Cabral. You're about to get tips, tools, and resources so that your students continue to rise in proficiency and communicate with confidence. Let's jump in. Vamos, allons-y. Hello, my friends. Bonjour, mes amis. Hola, mis amigos. Welcome to the World Language Classroom Podcast. I am Joshua Cabral, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your week and likely your busy schedule to listen to a podcast about language teaching so that you can bring these ideas back into your classroom and be an even more effective teacher. So thank you so much for doing that. If you could do me the quick favor of looking down at the app that you're listening to this podcast on and make sure that you have clicked on subscribe or follow whatever the app is asking you to do so that you are sure to get every one of these episodes on Monday when they come out. I'm in the process of interviewing so many wonderful guests during this week and last week, and they are all going to be ready for you to hear in the early months of 2023. So make sure you're following the podcast so you don't miss any of them. So let's take on this question of what we mean when we say teach a language. Now, if we think back 50 years ago, 60 years ago, even 20 years ago, and in maybe a lot of classrooms even now, teaching a language means teaching lists of vocabulary and maybe looking at some verb conjugations and memorizing subject pronouns, all those different things. We can easily say, yes, that's what teaching a language is. And traditionally, that's what textbooks have showed us, that that's what we mean when we're talking about teaching a language. And some of those things are helpful in what we're doing in our classrooms today. I'm never looking at language teaching, even with emerging researchers, throw everything out and do everything in this new way. But finding ways of modifying our teaching, improving our teaching as we go. But what do we really mean when we say teach a language? I mean, we're language teachers. That's what we tell people that we are when they ask, oh, what do you do? I'm a language teacher. So to answer this question, as I mentioned in the intro, I am really grounded in this quote that has stuck with me for 16, 17 years now. And it is a quote from Diane Larson Freeman and Michael H. Long. And it was in their 1990 publication, An Introduction to Second Language Acquisition Research. And this was one of the textbooks that was used in one of my graduate school classes. I believe it was Psycholinguistics. Doesn't that sound fun? But it was with, I believe, Paniota Gunari was my instructor in that class. And we had this quote to start. And it is very reminiscent for me of the ideas that Florencia Henshaw and Maris Hawkins put out in Common Ground, because it was really helping us to see we were going to look at so many different ways of language teaching that have been put out in research and a lot of the psycholinguistic research about linguistics and everything. But it was this idea that there are going to be some commonalities that we want to find in there. But I did this graduate school program. It was a master's degree in applied linguistics, and it was at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. And in this particular class, when we got this quote, It just has really stuck with me, and I wanted to share it with you so that you can think about it a little bit for your own teaching. So here it is from Larson, Freeman, and Long. It is not because some plants will grow in the desert that watering the ones in your garden is a waste of time. In fact, of course, while the desert may provide the minimum conditions for a plant to grow, watering it may help it grow faster, bigger, and stronger. That is to realize its full potential. So what is the language teacher's objective or job? 
So I like this quote, and we had to reflect on it a lot, and I continue to think about this, that learning a language, acquiring a language could possibly happen, as happens with a lot of people going and living in a new place and being immersed in a new language and a new culture, they do eventually, hopefully with time, begin to acquire that language and to be able to communicate in that language. It might not be the highest proficiency levels, but enough of a proficiency to be able to navigate living in that situation. And so that is what I think of, of the situation of a plant in the desert that doesn't require all of this watering and tending, and it's still able to thrive to some degree in its environment. But that doesn't mean that tending to it and tending to the ones in our own garden, I'm just going with the metaphor from Larson Freeman and Long here, that as we continue to tend to those flowers in our own garden and watering them regularly, they will grow bigger and stronger as would that one in the desert. So though there are some minimum conditions that would help with language acquisition to happen, which is essentially comprehensible language and making meaning of it and trying it out and seeing what works, that we as teachers can tend to that growing flower situation a little more and provide opportunities for that acquisition to happen more effectively and more efficiently. So essentially, that is what I'm seeing as our role as language teachers. So in looking specifically at the language teacher's job or objective, if you think back to the ideas of practice, activity, and task, and providing these for students in the classroom, and I really got into these ideas in episode 41, so I'm going to link that in the show notes if you want to spend some more time with them, but essentially when we're talking about practice, that's really working with the mechanics of the language, like verb and adjective forms, filling things in, that's really what practice is about. There's not a lot of communication happening there. So there are practice activities that we can do with students. And then there are what we'll refer to as activities. And these are based on the work of Bill Van Patten. And an activity has mechanics, yes, but also starts to have some meaning on it. So it is verb and adjective forms, but maybe you're writing a verb form based on an adverb that puts it in a particular time and space. So here's the subject, here's the verb. You could just say, put it in the future tense, or here's the subject, here's a verb, put it in a sentence with the word tomorrow. So yes, it's still an activity that is based on mechanics, but there's some meaning behind it. So it's a little more than just practice. But then when we look at tasks, The idea of a task is that there's an objective that's other than language, describing things, saying what you did yesterday, finding commonalities, explaining differences, where there's not really a mechanics base to that. It's really about using the language to have a different objective that it's sort of metalinguistic. It's beyond the linguistic objective. So that's the idea of practice, activity, and task. And we want to get to the point where we have some tasks in our classroom because that's where students are really authentically communicating. So have some time for practice, moving on to activities with those mechanics, but then having students do something with it. So again, if you really want to get into those, episode 41 will be linked in the show notes. So that's what I'm looking at as our role as teachers in the classroom. We are providing these opportunities for practice, activities, and tasks. And by doing those, what we are doing is taking that minimal requirement for language acquisition to happen and really enhancing it and providing students with opportunities that go beyond that simple plant in the desert. You're giving them water. You're providing them with more opportunities. So that's not to say that language acquisition can't happen without a teacher. It does all the time. But we can help craft these situations where the flower, the language acquisition, will continue to grow maybe faster, more effectively, and certainly more efficiently. So to keep up with the metaphor of watering the plant, what is this water that we're talking about? And I would say it is going back to this idea of practice, activity, and task. Now also let's keep in mind 
Stephen Krashen talks of teachers providing language input that is comprehensible. So not highly proficient language that would be encountered in real world situations. That would be the plant in the desert. They are just bombarded with lots of language that they don't understand. So they're not going to thrive and grow as effectively and efficiently. So they're not going to get all the water they need. Whereas Stephen Krashen saying that we provide comprehensible input to students where they can then make form meaning connections that will become part of their acquired system, that would be like providing water to that plant in the desert. So this leveled language engagement, that more and more language that's comprehensible to students, this is what will lead to uptake or their acquired language and then move into their long-term procedural memory to get really into the linguistics of it. Again, Stephen Krashen is saying that, you know, that plant in the desert will eventually grow, but by providing comprehensible input, which would be to water that plant, it will grow faster and further and thrive even more and grow in language acquisition. I know I'm using this plant metaphor a lot, but it's based on the Larson Freeman Long quote. So our jobs, as I see it, are essential parts in guiding and coaching students in that language acquisition process. Now, it might not look like those traditional grammar, vocabulary, instruction approaches that we've seen. Teaching might look a little different, and in fact, it does. It's more about crafting opportunities to engage with the language at the appropriate proficiency level. So that means getting students to the point where they can use the language to accomplish something, to do something. And that means creating tasks for them. So we want to provide opportunities to make those four meaning connections, as Henshaw and Hawkins point out, in common ground. So it's about a happy medium at the end. So yes, we have a job as teachers to take that base of People are going to learn language. The, every single person who speaks a language, a first language, learned it without the coaching and helping of a language teacher. So language teaching can happen without the support of a teacher. Just like that plant can grow in the desert that doesn't have a lot of access to water and tending. But... If that plant were to be watered, and maybe if that plant were not in the desert, but it were in a garden with other flowers, with soil and all of that, it would grow faster, it would thrive more, and the same thing's going to happen when it comes to language acquisition. So yes, without the support of a language teacher, yes, the possibility of language acquisition happening is there, it happens all the time. But we can, to use that metaphor, provide students with opportunities to move beyond practice and mechanics and to find meaning, to make meaning, form meaning connections, and then to use the language to do something, to accomplish a task. So it is about finding this happy medium. And there are things like targeted comprehensible input that are happening. There's the PACE model. And when we look at these types of approaches to teaching where we're saying, oh, we're not doing so much grammar in the classroom anymore, targeted comprehensible input would focus on particular structures. And even if you're using the PACE model in your classroom, it is eventually getting to a point where students are finding patterns and structures and being able to explicitly say what they are. But when we're using something like the PACE model, we're doing it in a way that is a lot more communicative. And even though it's highlighting structures, it's being done in a communicative way. So that is the idea of having this happy medium. It's just done in a more communicative way. And as is with everything, and I've pointed this out before on the podcast, let's look at principles over particular methods and particular techniques that are being shared with us and said that this is the way, do it just this way and it will work. Let's continue to look at the foundational principles. And to just answer this question again, that what is our job as a teacher or what does it mean to teach a language? I will just bring us back to this metaphor from Larson, Freeman, and Long. And remember that it is not because some plants will grow in the desert that watering the ones in our garden is a waste of time. In fact, of course, while the desert may provide the minimum conditions for a plant to grow, 
Watering it may help it grow faster, bigger, and stronger. That is to realize its full potential. And for me, that is what it means to teach a language. It is to provide students with opportunities to have their acquisition and their proficiency grow faster and stronger by giving them opportunities to engage with the language, to move beyond just practice mechanical tasks, but to move into those ideas of activities where maybe there's some focus on the mechanics, but there's a meaning on it, and then to eventually get them to that place where they are using the language to accomplish a task. So be sure to check out the show notes where you'll see the link to that previous episode on practice activities and tasks if you want to go a little deeper on that. You'll also see the link to sign up for Talking Points, my weekly email newsletter with tips and resources for language teaching. And there's also a link to get in touch if you would like to work together, either in person in your school or remotely. I will talk to you soon. Bye for now. You've been listening to the World Language Classroom Podcast. Be sure to follow or subscribe wherever you're listening so you don't miss a single episode. Let's continue the conversation on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at WL Classroom. You can also see over 250 blog posts about language teaching at, you guessed it, wlclassroom.com.